let's look at a few extensions and applications of Newton's method. First, there's this problem that we need to be able to differentiate every function that we want to find a zero of. However, we may not remember the rules of differentiation, or we might be getting an arbitrary function that we know is differentiable, but we'd like to be able to differentiate it automatically. Well, one option is to use approximate differentiation. So remember our curve here. Differentiation can be performed symbolically, which is what we were doing before. So this curve is actually x squared minus 16, which has a zero at four. And the symbolic differentiation gives you that the derivative is two x. So at this point two, the derivative is four in math x squared minus 16, f prime of x is 2x, f prime of 2 is 4. And that's the symbolic differentiation part, is the relationship between those two expressions. Now, the derivative of a function is defined as the limit, as a goes to 0, of the rise over the run, or the change in f of x divided by the change in x where a becomes some very small number. That's what a goes to zero means. Well, you can approximate that just by using a small a. So f prime of x is kind of close to any one of these values, as long as a is pretty small. So let's pick an a that's small, meaning we'll pick an x plus a point that's pretty close to x, at which point we can compute f of x plus a and find that point right there, and draw a line between the point x comma f of x and x plus a comma f of x plus a. I've simplified the implementation a little bit just by removing our custom implementation of power and putting pow there instead. So first, I'm going to define the slope of a function f at a point x using some a, which will be some small number here, 10 to the negative fifth. Here I just return the difference between f of x plus a and f at x divided by a. Once I have the slope, I can actually compute the approximate derivative. So deriving a function f just means returning a new function where what it computes is the slope of f at x. Once I can def derive a function automatically, I can implement approximate zero, which is kind of like find zero up here, except for instead of taking f and df, it just takes f. We're still going to use our implementation of find zero, except for we'll pass in f and the automatically derived version of Okay, so at this point, I could redefine root without ever computing df. Instead, I just use the approximate zero that I get by using Newton's method on the function f, which just takes power x to the n minus a. So is it still the case that I can take the square root of 16? Well, sure, and I can even take the square root of 2 or the cubed root of 729. Here are some applications of Newton's method. One is to find critical points, the maximum or minimum of a function, or the inflection point. Well, all of these occur when the derivative is zero. Here's a picture of a curve with all of the critical points marked. So let's try it out. Now, if we're using this approximation to derive and we're going to apply derive twice, once in order to get the derivative of the function, and again in order to use Newton's method, it's important that we play a little bit with this constant a. So what I'm going to do here is just make sure that we pass a down. This is a perfectly good starting value, but we want to make sure that when we derive, we have control of this approximation constant. And we pass that into slope, which again has the same default value, but gets overridden by anything we pass in. 
And here I'm actually going to make approximate zero derive with even more precision using a smaller a. So that will give us a better approximation of how close we are to the original x when we approximate the slope or the derivative of the function. Now we can define a function critical, which takes an f and finds one of its critical points. Which one? Well, somewhere way in here we have some starting guess of 1, and so it's going to find one near there. Does it always find the closest one? No. How exactly do you get it to find all of them? Well, you could try lots of different guesses and see where you end up. It's going to return the function evaluated on a particular point, the zero of the derivative. That's the definition of a critical point. So let's imagine that we have some function. f is lambda x, x squared plus 4x plus 1. So f of 1 is 6, and f of 2 is 13, and f of 3 is 22, and f of 4 is 33, and f of 5 is 46. OK, so it's increasing in that direction. What about f of negative 1 is negative 2? And then we see that right around here, there's some minimum value, negative 3. And we could have worked that out using algebra. But we'd like it to be the case that by calling critical on f, it finds that value negative 3 for us. And here we see it got pretty close. Like if I round this to seven decimal places, then I do get negative 3. Now why is it not quite exact? Well, here we're automatically approximately deriving f and using that in an approximate Newton's method function. So it's all because we're not exactly computing the slope. We're computing something close to the slope that we get a little bit of error in the last few digits. What about computing the inverse of a function? So let's imagine that a function is differentiable and one-to-one, -one, meaning for every x there's a y, and for every y there's exactly one x. We want to find the inverse, and that inverse is the function that computes x such that f of x equals y for any input y. So it goes backwards. Well, it turns out that the inverse of f is a function of y that computes, oh, what is the x such that f of x equals y? It's the number x that finds the solution to f of x equals y, or the zero of the function f of x minus y. Now, if I wanted to find square root, I can just say that's the function that's the inverse of squaring things. Lambda x, x times x is the function that squares, and now I can take the square root of 4 and get 2, or the square root of 1, get 1, square root of 16 is 4, square root of 2 is 1.4142. So perhaps that's the simplest definition of square root that we've come across all day. Just by generally building functions out of functions out of functions using this one core idea of Newton's method.